a season of intense agreement with the will and the word of God for our lives. Violent involvement in what God is doing. A violent involvement. So he's forming us into this, this new wineskin to hold this new wine. And you know that I've been studying the Holy Spirit now for over two years. And I have over 25,000 prayers and confessions of the Holy Spirit. And I feel like I haven't even touched the surface. Five handwritten books. Almost up to number six. The Holy Spirit is the most amazing, wonderful person. Jesus said it's much better for us that he went back to the Father so we could have the Holy Spirit. So let me tell you how the current church dishonours. This is nowhere on this, right? But let me tell you where the current church dishonours God. We dishonour the Holy Spirit. Because we think it's wonderful when the Holy Spirit moves and people are on the floor and the gifts flow. But we don't live with the Holy Spirit. We don't live with him. We just expect him to move. We dishonour the Holy Spirit. It's not blasphemy. He forgives us. This is not the unforgivable sin. But we dishonour the Holy Spirit every time we get so excited about a move of God and we keep it for Sundays or for special meetings or for conferences or whenever it might be or what we love to see on the TV, on the, on the YouTubes and the podcasts, but we don't live with him. Yeah. This is a season of fasting and intercession. You want to know why some devils aren't leaving? Because we have not embraced fasting and prayer. Let me tell you another way we dishonour the kingdom. We dishonour the sacrifices and the offices of Jesus Christ. Now we, we put the name of Jesus at the end of every prayer. We make declarations in the name of Jesus but we don't understand that it comes from an office, that he is my high priest. And as such, he takes my words and he takes my prayers and he makes them acceptable before he presents them to the Father. We don't honour him as the Lord of hosts, the God of angel armies. We don't honour him as Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. Be healed in Jesus' name, we say but we don't honour his office. And as we don't honour his office, we wonder why things aren't manifesting in our lives the way the Bible tells us, because we just tack on the name of Jesus. But we have forgotten his office. I have over 280 names for the Holy Spirit. Pretty much the same for Jesus. We need to understand who we actually serve. He is the King of Kings. We are the Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. We are the Lords. Small L, small K. But He's also Master. He's Saviour, Redeemer, Deliverer, Baptizer. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of war. When was the last time you aligned with the Holy Spirit as the spirit of war to war against the spirit of evil in this nation? We have neglected the reality and the majesty of the kingdom for what we've been taught. This is what it is, we've been told. Just say the name of Jesus at the end of your prayers. But really that only works if the prayer is in alignment with the will of God. And the nature of Christ. 
We have to come into a relationship with Father, Son and Holy Spirit in a way we never have before. In the New Testament, the Holy Spirit spoke to the church. Acts chapter 13, the Holy Spirit spoke and said, separate these two for me and commission them. When was the last time you heard the voice of the Holy Spirit? Have you ever heard the voice of the Holy Spirit? Do you recognize the voice of Father? Jesus, Holy Spirit. Or have we all just lumped them together? And the Lord said, we are in the Western nation, an impoverished church. We think we've got the answers. We think it's all intellectual. We think we've got everything. We've got nothing. If you have not got the presence of the King of Kings in your heart and in your life, if you don't serve him with everything you are, then let me tell you there is a process that we need to step into. And I'm not speaking condemnation because Jesus Christ has made us complete. When in the spiritual realm, in the Father's eyes, I am complete in Jesus Christ. In the natural, I've got some growing up to do. In the Father's eyes, when I put on the, the armour of God, the enemy sees me as God because I have on his armor. The only way the enemy knows it's me if I say something stupid. Step out from behind the armor. You've got to realize how, what God sees, how God sees you in the spirit realm and where he's growing us into. Any cracks in our relationships, any cracks in our marriages, any cracks anywhere, if they are not fixed, you are taking a faulty foundation into your kingdom walk, which will cause some kind of a time bomb sometime down the track later on. Just like when Abraham sold his wife to Pharaoh the first time in Genesis 12, and when Pharaoh found out what he'd done, Pharaoh said, oh my goodness, I'm not having a bar of this. I'm releasing you. I'm giving you silver and gold and main servants and female servants. In with those servants was a time bomb named Hagar who produced Ishmael. So every time we allow something to continue in our life that is not of God, we can carry a time bomb. Yes. Time bomb repeats. Generational. The first time Lot talked about Abraham and Lot talked about strife in Genesis 13, the first word, first time strife is used, it was a male word. In the Hebrew language, it was male, which means it's a one-off argument. It just, it's just a one-off. We'll deal with this and move on. But when Abraham talked about strife, the second time that word is used in the following verse, it was a female word, female noun, which meant this is an ongoing thing. This will breed for generations. So you need to understand what's happening in the spirit realm by the decisions and the choices you make. So we've had this conference with David McDonald and he's talking about an equipped church and he's talking about the leaven that we carry on the inside of us which sometimes stops us from moving into the fullness. But I'm saying to you right now that in this new move of God, unless we are birthed in love and bathed in love, we will, not, we will not walk in the fullness of what the Father has for us. Unless we're on that narrow path, we're not going to come out into that place of fruitfulness and lavish abundance that he's got for us. I'm not going to have much fruit to take to the Father. I might have a bit. This is a season of radical change. Yes. 